of today's um, challenge, we're looking at the main course leftover, um, lockdown leftovers. So what I've got, first of all, is I've gone through what I've got as leftovers to create a dish, and this is the kind of experience I want you to have. So you open your fridge, you open your cupboard, you open your freezer, make a note of all the ingredients that you've got, and then see what you can come up with it that's creative. Obviously, we want to bear in mind all of the different criteria, so we want to make sure we've got one of two of our five a day, I've actually said for this one. Um, a carbohydrate source is important with it being a main course. We want that energy to come through. Um, we want to make sure we're using something fresh, something out the cupboard or something out the freezer as part of it and it's to feed two, maybe three people. So, leftover pasta, already cooked. So that one's really, really easy. So that's gonna be the base. That's my carbohydrate and I am going to make a pasta bake. So I've got this, my two of my five a day. I've got two starting to look a bit wrinkly um, spring onions and I've got a yellow pepper. I'm going to use a little bit of garlic, which is just chasing around the bowl, I don't know where it's gone. A little bit of garlic, obviously for flavour, cheese to go on the top. I've got tin of tuna to go into pasta bake, some passata, which is like a puree, tomato, chopped tomatoes, and I've actually got some cream cheese, so I'm going to stir the cream cheese through to make it a creamy pasta sauce, because um, it's going to be suitable for my children to eat. So they're my leftover ingredients or store cupboard ingredients. There's nothing there that I've been out and bought. They're all just part of things that were on a previous food shop that I'm now just putting together. Or things like tins of tuna, I've always kind of got a couple of cans of those in. Always got some tomatoes. So I'm gonna get on with preparing the ingredients first of all. So I'll demonstrate all the techniques of chopping and stuff with you and then we can get moving on making it and I'll pop it into a dish and pop it in the oven. So what I'm gonna do first of all Preheat the oven just to 200 degrees, gas mark six, and that's for obviously a pasta bake. Because most of it will be warm already, it's just going in there just so it can glattinate the top with the cheese. So it could really be done under the grill as well. So oven is preheated. So first thing I'm going to do is prepare the pepper. And I'm going to dice the pepper, but I'm going to put it in quite big chunks today because of it being a pasta bake. Um, I want it to add quite a big texture into the ingredient, into the recipe. Because the tuna is quite flaky, it's not. We're kind of missing the the meatiness. So I'm going to try and create that more with the pepper. So the pepper is going to be in large pieces. So when I'm cutting it, I'm not doing it into thin strips. I'm doing it into quite large chunky strips that I can then dice into large pieces the centre part out so all my pieces are like that quite big so that's what we want to have in the pepper and with today I'm going to use the whole pepper because we're creating more waste and more leftovers if I don't today put it all through and put it into large chunks using claw grip spring onion to take away any of the outer layers so if you've got an outer Skin, just remove that part, get rid of that. That's obviously been in contact with the dirt, that whole bacteria. If you need to, because you can still see there's a bit of mud, then you might want to rinse that as well. And then we are going to top and tail. So we're taking the root off, and then where it starts to go a little bit squishy and hollow at the other end, we're going to remove that too. And then all I'm going to do is claw grip and just dice. Uh, sorry, slice all the way along. And I'm using a spring onion just because that's what I've got, but obviously that would be also work with using um, an onion as well. So inside here now, I'm going to get some oil. I'm going to add a little bit of oil for just to fry those vegetables. Open the oil. So pop oil on, and then I'm going to move it to the front, which I've preheated. Uh, the the mobile kind of plug-in hub that I have here, which makes the camera and the demonstrations easier, just takes ages to heat up. So a little bit of oil in there. I'm going to add my spring onions. I'm going to add my pepper. And then all I'm going to do is just prepare the garlic just while that is happening. And then I'll take the lids off the tuna. So a little bit of garlic, obviously removing the outer layers of the garlic making sure we've not got that crispy kind of paper. And then you can either use a garlic crusher, or even if you've got lazy garlic, that would be really good for using leftovers up. That's quite, um, it lasts quite a while in the fridge. If it's something that you know you don't use garlic as much, you can use a lazy garlic. And then dicing all the way along, turning over at the ends, 
just want this garlic to be as small as possible. The last thing you want is a huge piece of garlic when you're taking a bite of your food. So you want it to really blend in and just be distributing that flavour rather than anything else. And don't put it in straight away because surface area is so small, we don't want it to burn. So in there at the moment, we're just caramelising those onions and the peppers and we're going to wait for them to start to sizzle, which will take a few minutes obviously because it takes a while to heat up. So in the meantime, the passata, lift the corner up like so, give it a good shake. And then we're just going to snip the top off just like you would do with a carton. So that's ready to be poured in. As I said, my pasta is cooked, so that'll just be stirred, stirred through at the end. And then can open it, I just need to drain off the tuna. So as I open this, you'll be very steady with tuna because it is in brine or sea water, uh, salt water, sorry. Um, we want to make sure that we don't spill it all over the work surface. So once I've removed the tin lid completely, you can pop it back on and then hold that so you don't lose any of the tuna and that can just be rinsed in the sink or drained in the sink, sorry. Push that all the way through. The tuna obviously is already cooked so we don't need to do anything again with that, just heating it through so that will be stirred in in a few moments. Another thing to do, this is the only thing I've not actually opened so I've got some cream cheese in my fridge uh, but what good thing about cream cheese, it's got a really long date on it. So it's 3rd of March, so that will go out of date. So it's really good just to have in. Um, and then obviously, you know, it's fresh and you can open it. So I'll just take a spoonful of the cream cheese out so that that can make the sauce really rich and creamy. A little bit like um, tomato mascarpone type sauce is what I'm aiming for. But my protein is tuna rather than just having it plain without any protein in it. This is taken quite a while let's just turn it up a little bit so the last thing i'm going to do is top it with some cheese so i'm going to grate some cheese always got cheese in seems to be something that most uh, households have got a piece of uh, a little piece of cheese in there so i'm going to grate the cheese and then that will be ready to be put on the top to really create that crispy coating one thing i've seen people do uh, in recent years with pasta bakes uh, might be something that you already do is to crunch up crisps on the top it adds an, an extra element like really crispy on the top I suppose with the, of like a ready salted crisp it's adding a lot of flavour as well so that's something that you might want to do they're also classed as leftovers you're not going out to the shop specifically to buy them just a little bit more cheese um, so that might be a nice idea to add as a topping so all my cheese is now done move that grater out of the way tidying up as I go along so that can go back in the fridge because obviously you don't want to waste any food that can be used on something else and this is just starting to cook through now so I'm going to add the garlic in fry that now for a couple of minutes before we bring the dish together so these vegetables now have been frying for two or three more minutes obviously nicely caramelized, starting to soften. Obviously they'll soften a little bit more in the oven as we bake it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add in the tuna into there straight away, because there's no cooking needed with the tuna like I said before. Once the tuna's in, we can add the passata. Obviously add a little bit more than what's in the ingredients. So I've coated it. Um, but I've also then added a little bit extra because I've got to then incorporate the pasta as well. So once that's in, it's really red and rich at the moment. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use a different spoon. I've got on it. I'm going to add a dollop of soft cheese just to add that creaminess. So just a spoonful like so. Pop that in, mix that around and that will turn the sauce from like a a rich red to a, a vibrant orange. So stir all that in. And then we can add in the pasta. And I'm ready then, once that's coated, to pop it into the dish. You'll be able to see me transferring it to the dish. Just move that out of the way. Coating it all around. And obviously the sauce, just the residual heat from the sauce will start to heat the pasta through straight away. And then obviously we're going to pop it into the oven for it to gratinate as well. One thing that um, I will do once I finish, I've got some parsley to go over the top. 
but at this stage I've got everything that I want in the dish so I'm just going to pour it you can now see what I'm doing pour all that into the dish probably the smallest dish that I've got it's not quite filling it but it will still make our dinner so pop that in spread it all around making sure that you've distributed all the ingredients and the sauces coating everything cheese over the top to really add that lovely gratinated crispy golden colour lots of sort big source of calcium there for us as well so that now is going to go into the oven to bake for about 15 20 minutes which will be the perfect amount of time for you to do your designing so i'm going to pop that into the oven get my oven gloves on and then we will return once that has baked and i'll show you the finishing touches for our presentation part of the criteria right so now that we are ready to take this out of the oven i'm just going to put a little bit of a protector a little trivet on here so that i don't burn my work surface i'm going to show you how to garnish it show you the finished product and then you are ready for when you're making your lockdown main course oh, easy. so that's going to go on there so that i don't burn my work surface that's just going to protect it, make sure that if you are doing similar at home, that you are also protecting the work surfaces, you don't want to cause any damage in the kitchens. So, that, as you can see there, lovely and melted. Obviously all the cheese has started to gratinate, so I'm going to pop that onto the trivet, and then I'm going to use a little bit of parsley as a garnish so all i'm going to do is just roll it up a little bit and then just snip and scatter all the way across the top just to help with the presentation that green just adds such a vibrant fresh color and quite a i don't know really how you describe it maybe like a grassy type taste I love parsley, I think it's something, it's one of the herbs that most people are okay with. Some can be um, a little bit strong, quite perfume, coriander is one that people don't really like. But that adds a real lovely colour to it, bit of a sprig at the end to pop in the middle. And that is an ingredient, a recipe there that's just purely been made with lockdown ingredients. And how yummy does that look? Okay, so that is the leftover lockdown leftovers pasta tuna pasta bake that I have just made using all the ingredients in my fridge, my store cupboard. Haven't actually used any freezer ingredients today, but obviously I could have stirred some frozen sweet corn through there or any other vegetables. Um, obviously I've taken food out of the uh, oven, so I've now got a dog in the kitchen with me who obviously can smell how delicious this is. The only thing I'd say is obviously if you want to add a little bit of seasoning, I didn't put any salt in because I do use salt when I cooked the pasta and also I've used cheese which is quite salty naturally anyway but you could also add some dried mixed herbs some pepper you could even put some cayenne pepper in there if you wanted to but that is one of my lockdown dishes we'll be able to find out what you're making now